Oh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very nice to, to be here. I, I notice a number of familiar faces, some of which I haven't seen for many years because I've been a recluse for many years working on my science book, and it's very exciting to be out and about again. Well, what I, what I want to talk to you about today is, uh, is an intellectual structure that I've actually spent uh, the better part of the past 20 years building, and I, I think it's gradually going to become more and more important. Well, back in the, in the late 1970s, I was a, a young physicist, mainly working on particle physics. I also did a certain amount of work on cosmology. And from that, I got interested in the question of how structures emerge in our universe, from galaxies on down. Looking at that question, I quickly realized that it was actually an instance of a much more general question. How does anything complicated get produced in nature? Well, there are lots of everyday examples, snowflakes, turbulent fluid flows, forms of plants and animals, lots of others. My first assumption was that with all the sophisticated math and so on that I knew from particle physics and, and those kinds of things, I, I'd easily be able to figure out what was going on with these sort of ordinary everyday systems. But when I actually tried to do it, it just didn't seem to work. And gradually what I began to think was that perhaps there might be a fundamental problem with the whole approach. Well, if one looks at history, the idea of using math and mathematical equations to understand nature has sort of been a defining feature of the exact sciences for perhaps 300 years. And it certainly worked out extremely well for Newton and friends in figuring out orbits of comets and for lots and lots of things since then. But somehow when the behavior one's looking at is more complicated, it just doesn't seem to work so well. And gradually what I began to think was that that was actually why there had never really been a good theory for complicated processes in nature, in physics, and particularly in biology and so on. And I got to wondering about whether there might somehow be a way to go sort of beyond the usual paradigm of using mathematical equations in, in thinking about nature. Well, that was around 1981. And it so happened that at that time, I had just spent time developing a big software system.